Welcome to our exploration of The Four Agreements, A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom by Don Miguel Ruiz, a book that has not only touched hearts but has also transformed lives across the globe. Don Miguel Ruiz, a Mexican author of Toltec spiritualist and neo-shamanistic texts, has beautifully encapsulated the ancient Toltec wisdom in this masterpiece. The book, a New York Times bestseller for over a decade, explores the concept of personal freedom. It presents us with four principles or agreements that, when applied, promise to lift us to a state of enlightened happiness and unfettered personal freedom. These principles are not just words, they are bridges connecting us to our inner selves, to a world of peace, harmony, and absolute freedom. The Four Agreements is not just a book, it's an experience, a journey towards self-discovery and personal freedom. So let's dive into this transformative journey as we unravel the four agreements that promise to change your life. The first agreement that Ruiz talks about is, be impeccable with your word. This agreement is not just about speaking truthfully, it's much more than that. It's about understanding the profound impact of our words, our means of communication. In the grand theater of life, words are the actors. They play a vital role influencing our thoughts, our emotions and our actions. They have the power to shape our reality. They can create or they can destroy. They can uplift us, inspire us, or they can bring us down. They can build bridges or they can burn them. As such, Ruiz encourages us to be impeccable with our words, to use them wisely and responsibly. But what does it mean to be impeccable with your word? It means to speak with integrity, to say only what you mean. It's about avoiding gossip, lies, and negative self-talk. It's about using your words to express love, to spread positivity, to build up rather than tear down. It's about aligning your words with your truth, your values, and your goals. Let's take a moment to reflect on this. How often do we speak without thinking, letting our words spill out without considering their impact? How often do we use our words to criticize ourselves, to belittle our efforts, to feed our insecurities? How often do we speak ill of others, spreading negativity and discord. Ruiz challenges us to change this pattern, to become more mindful of our words. He asks us to use our words to support, encourage and uplift ourselves and others, to use our words to spread love and positivity, to build bridges, not walls, to use our words to create, not destroy. And so, dear listener, as you go about your day, remember this first agreement. Be impeccable with your word. Remember the power of your words. Use them wisely, use them well, speak your truth, express your love, spread positivity. Remember your words can plant gardens or they can burn whole forests down. The second agreement is, don't take anything personally. Imagine you're walking down a bustling city street. A stranger passes by and mutters a negative comment about your appearance. What's your immediate reaction? If you're like most people, you might feel a sting of hurt or anger. But here's the thing. That person's comment has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. It's a reflection of their own reality, not yours. Don Miguel Ruiz, with his wisdom rooted in ancient Toltec philosophy, teaches us that nothing others do is because of us. It's about their own self, their thoughts, their beliefs, their feelings. When we understand this, we can start to see interactions with others in a completely new light. How liberating is it to realize that you are not the center of everyone's universe, that each person you meet is living in their own world with their own set of beliefs and perceptions. It's like you're an extra in their movie and they're an extra in yours. You're just passing through their narrative and they're passing through yours. But what happens when we do take things personally? We create unnecessary suffering and turmoil in our lives. We let someone else's reality dictate our emotions, our mood, and even our self-worth. We hand over our peace of mind to someone else. The beauty of not taking things personally is that it frees us. It frees us from the weight of other people's opinions, judgments, and criticisms. It lets us navigate our lives with a sense of inner peace and self-assuredness. Of course, this doesn't mean we should dismiss constructive feedback or ignore the feelings of others. It's about distinguishing between what's about us and what's not. It's about maintaining our emotional autonomy and not letting others' actions or words dictate our sense of self. So, the next time someone hurls an insult your way or makes a negative comment, remember, 
It's not about you, it's about them. Their words are a reflection of their reality, not yours. When you refuse to take things personally, you avoid many upsets in your life. Moving on to the third agreement, don't make assumptions. Imagine you're in a conversation and you're certain you know what the other person is thinking. You believe you've grasped their perspective, their motives, their desires. But have you really? Or are you just making assumptions? The third agreement, don't make assumptions, is a powerful reminder of how often we tend to do just that. We make assumptions about everything. The weather, the traffic, our friends' intentions, our partner's feelings, even our own abilities. But here's the thing about assumptions. They're not facts, they're just perceptions. And more often than not, they're born out of our fears, insecurities, and past experiences. They're not absolute truths, but they can absolutely affect our relationships, our decisions, and ultimately, our lives. Assumptions are like a foggy mirror. They distort our vision, cloud our judgment, and lead us to misunderstandings. We assume we know what others are thinking and feeling. We assume they know what we are thinking and feeling. But the truth is, we don't. And this gap in understanding, this gap in communication, is the birthplace of conflict, disappointment, and regret. So how do we navigate this foggy mirror? How do we clear the fog of assumptions? The answer lies in communication, in having the courage to ask questions, in expressing what we truly want, in seeking clarity over assumptions. This does not mean that you need to question everything and everyone around you. Rather, it means to question your assumptions, to challenge your perceived realities, and to communicate your thoughts and desires openly and honestly. And remember, it's not just about asking questions, but about asking the right questions. Questions that seek understanding, not validation. Questions that open doors, not build walls. Questions that clear the fog, not thicken it. So the next time you find yourself on the brink of an assumption, pause, reflect, ask, communicate. Because assumptions are not truths. They're not your truths. They're not anyone's truths. They're just perceptions. Always find the courage to ask questions and express what you really want. It will clear misunderstandings. The final agreement that Ruiz talks about is always do your best. This principle, though simple on the surface, carries a profound depth within. The essence of this agreement is to give every task, every interaction, every moment of your life, your absolute best effort. Doing your best is not about perfection, but about engagement. It's about fully committing yourself to the task at hand, regardless of the circumstances. It's about pouring your heart and soul into your actions and not holding back. It's about striving for excellence, not for the sake of others' approval, but for the sheer joy and fulfillment that comes from giving your all. This doesn't mean you have to push yourself beyond your limits or burn yourself out. Ruiz emphasizes that your best can and will change from moment to moment. Your best when you're healthy and energized will look different from your best when you're sick or tired. That's okay. The point is to always strive to do the best you can at that given moment. Doing your best also means accepting that sometimes your best won't be enough to achieve what you want. And that's okay too. It's not about the outcome, but about the effort. As Ruiz says, your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, Simply do your best, and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. So remember, it's not about comparing yourself to others or meeting some arbitrary standard of perfection. It's about being fully present and engaged in what you're doing. It's about being true to yourself, honoring your abilities, and giving your all to every moment of your life. Remember, when you always do your best, you take action, and it's the action that is going to make you feel intensely happy. So those were the four agreements, a guide to personal freedom and happiness. Let's do a quick recap. First, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity and only say what you mean. Second, don't take anything personally. Remember, what others say and do is a projection of their own reality. Third, don't make assumptions. Always seek clarity and communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings. And fourth, always do your best. Recognize that your best will vary from moment to moment, but regardless of the quality, keep moving forward. These principles may seem simple, but their power lies in their simplicity. When practiced consistently, 
they can lead to profound personal transformation and a sense of true freedom. Start today and take small steps towards implementing these agreements into your daily life. Don't forget, these four agreements are a guide to stop self-limiting beliefs and start living with a newfound sense of freedom and happiness.